six. Okay, last time we have seen what is programming, what is uh, UCD, what is uh, human computer interaction. So today we continue with the term uh, holography. So holography is actually the science and practice of making holograms. So what is hologram? Hologram is a three-dimensional image formed by the interference of light beams from a laser or other coherent light source. Okay, so ini kita nak tengok uh, term holography uh, yang mana berkait dengan holograms. So holograms adalah uh, 3D image yang terhasil daripada uh, interference of light. Okay, so hologram is a photographic recording of a light field rather than of an image formed by a lens which is seen without the aid of special glasses or other intermediate optics. Okay, ini adalah satu contoh uh, hologram. Uh, Prince Charles appear in Abu Dhabi as a hologram. Uh, how virtual Charles uh, use an optical illusion to address Abu Dhabi Energy Summit. Okay, uh, so this is the process. We have a video projector. Okay, projected image. Okay, uh, screen and then... Uh, the image is reflected up on the uh, to the foil and then uh, the image appears of Prince Charles appears to be standing on the stage maksudnya dia menghasilkan image 3D okay. sedangkan orang tu tidak wujud di situ okay. so holograms uh, we have um, uh, many benefits in education, for example, have expert illustrate processes live in person in 3D. So, macam dari segi uh, pendidikan, kalau kita nak represent uh, sistem dalaman manusia contohnya, okay, kalau sebelum-sebelum ni, uh, 10 years ago mungkin dalam bentuk, uh, 10, 20 years ago mungkin dalam bentuk uh, 2D, gambar dalam buku macam tu. Okay, tapi dengan adanya hologram, mungkin kita boleh represent dalam bentuk 3D image. Jadi orang lebih mudah nampak uh, apa yang nak disampaikan. Contohnya image dalam tubuh badan manusia. So connect geographically remote classroom. Okay. So contohnya dalam pengajaran, uh, so kita boleh uh, macam wujudkan image uh, pengajar tu dalam uh, classroom walaupun Pengajar tu tidak ada di situ. So, deliver lectures to multiple classroom anywhere at the same time. Okay. Seorang so, instructor boleh berada dalam banyak kelas secara virtual. And then, remote attendance, remote access, be there in 3D. Okay. Macam yang tadilah. Okay. Point 1 to 3. Uh, lebih kurang je dengan point number 5. A whole new dimension to instructional content. Uh, go back in time 3D. Okay, yang ni adalah contoh-contoh dia. Okay, next. Uh, the last part for chapter 6 is web system. Okay, so we are going to look at uh, what is web system and technology. So, web system is a hypermedia system that contain pages of information that are linked to each other in the form of graph as opposed to being hierarchical or linear. So, kalau sebelum ni kita dah belajar apa itu website www ni adalah uh, kesinambungan daripada uh, basic idea uh, web page, web system. Okay, so web system tu terdiri daripada pages of information link together, link uh, to each other in the form of graph as opposed to being hierarchical or linear. Web system can manifest itself as a web server that can be accessed through a browser. So, web technology relates to the interface between web servers and their clients. It includes markup language, okay, HTML semua tu, programming interfaces and language and standard for document identification and display. So, bila kita bercakap tentang teknologi tu, dia berkait rapat dengan interface okay, di antara web server dengan client. Dan bila kita bercakap tentang uh, web juga, kita ada markup language, biasanya HTML, ada melibatkan programming. Okay. Dan sebagainya lah. Standard. So next, uh, web system and technology involve design, implementation and testing of 
web-based applications and social software and the incorporation of a variety of digital media into this application. So, bila kita bercakap tentang web system dengan teknologi, dia melibatkan uh, reka bentuk, uh, cara kita mem 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 membina, implement. Okay, develop uh, web tu, kita test application dia uh, berserta dengan software. Okay, dan juga um, uh, hubung kait dengan digital media. Okay, includes a wide range of web technologies, both client side and Uh, server side. So, bila kita katakan web, dia mestilah ada server side dan client side. Uh, bila you nak access uh, website, you adalah client dan ada server yang uh, respond to your request bila you click submit ke uh, view ke whatever. So, employers expect the IT graduate to be competent with writing web applications since most businesses are seeking to become digital firms. So, content of uh, Web application, uh, macam saya kata tadi, we have uh, client-side programming, server-side programming, kedua-dua uh, side, kedua-dua belah pihak, sama ada client ataupun server, mesti melibatkan programming sebenarnya, di belakangnya. So, web services, uh, web servers, open source and proprietary server software, of course, bila kita nak develop satu-satu application, kita memerlukan Uh, software sebab ada open source ataupun uh, apa saja software yang berkaitan dan emerging uh, of course melibatkan emerging technologies and we have to obey to certain web standards and standard body so web standard tu uh, contohnya walaupun you guna komputer jenis uh, tertentu jenis A uh, still boleh assess uh, boleh view web tu uh, ber berbanding kawan you yang menggunakan Uh, device dari uh, contohnya brand B dan begitu juga dengan brand-brand lain so why because they have to obey to the same web standards so web standard ni ditentukan oleh standard bodies ok dia adalah uh, uh, ISO ke whatever and then website implementation and integration ok next Uh, five keys for web application developer. Okay. Okay, dari segi uh, we have uh, these five skills. Okay, first one is structure. Okay, then second one presentation, behavior, database and server side language. Dan ini adalah uh, uh, programming language ataupun language yang kita perlu untuk structure biasanya HTML, presentation, CSS, behavior, JavaScript, for database, SQL and then for server side language we have PHP okay, in bracket we have JSP, ASP, Perl, Ruby nah, ini adalah uh, programming, melibatkan uh, programming semua ni okay. so let's look at HTML give you Uh, give your website structure and layout. This is what end user sees and care about. Most important skill you should know HTML better than server side language. Okay, server side language is optional but HTML is a must for web page. Uh, bila kita bercakap tentang web page, uh, dia memang melibatkan HTML. You can also create a website which will look good in absence of CSS and will work without JavaScript. Okay, walaupun tidak ada CSS, tidak ada JavaScript dengan hanya HTML boleh memberikan uh, website tu satu struktur yang uh, baik dari segi appearance. So next is CSS. CSS is used to give the look and feel presentation to your website. Okay, design is what your users or clients is to make your website look good in all the browsers. Okay, you need CSS. So to make your website uh, look good, okay. You as a web developer need to know and understand how it works, how you can simplify the HTML layout so that it become manageable. Okay, next one is JavaScript. JavaScript adds behavior to your website, make it, uh, makes it interesting and improve the user experience. Okay, give you uh, ability to do some uh, nifty things with your web page. Okay, uh, like like box rating. Okay. Choose interesting frameworks okay, that make developers life easier. So, nanti uh, I'm not sure whether 
uh, for the next semester you are going to learn java or not okay i'm not sure uh, we have to check back the maybe you can check with the study plan uh, same ke berapa you akan belajar semua ni okay uh, then sql sql ni adalah uh, satu language bila melibatkan database so what application that almost always rely on uh, database sql allows to get the data fast enough from your database to know queries database schema and interfaces of the database itself okay Okay, contohnya macam kita nak uh, satu web yang kita boleh isi maklumat. Okay. Uh, contohnya kalau uh, web untuk banci, uh, banci penduduk kita isi maklumat kita dan kita boleh tengok balik apa yang kita isi. Uh, biasanya tu melibatkan database dan bila melibatkan database dia melibatkan SQL. Okay. Uh, then last one is PHP is scripting language on server side uh, provide function for everything you can think of that is required in a web application yeah, yang ni lebih kepada di sebelah server so the first three skill will make you have the ability to become the super cool static website developer okay or front end developer the last two skills they will make you a web application developer okay static ni maksudnya dia hanya paparkan uh, maklumat pada pengguna tu maksudnya static website ok tapi kalau uh, dengan adanya database biasanya data, uh, bila melibatkan SQL database uh, website tu uh, kebiasaannya menerima input daripada user macam saya kata tadi lah uh, website untuk uh, kita isi maklumat kita dan kita da uh, dapat uh, print maklumat tu uh, tu uh, adalah uh, dynamic website maksudnya uh, bukan static ok then uh, look at next term web based information web based information displays many benefits of of multimedia technology okay, using today's fast broadband connection it is possible to stream sophisticated content to a computer anywhere in the world this is an advantage for many people as the information can be received and read wherever and whenever it is convenient for them which can be a crucial factor for a busy executive so a significant amount of interactive material is now delivered via the internet. So yang ni dia cuma nak highlight uh, multimedia, point multimedia sekarang ni uh, apa sahaja content multimedia boleh kita tengok melalui web. Okay. Audio, video dan sebagainya, live streaming. Okay, last but not least, another one. Okay, uh, computer ethics. Okay. Selain daripada you perlu tahu programming apa itu HCI, UCD, uh, web-based uh, technology, hologram dan sebagainya, uh, you have to know also about computer ethics. So, ethics, what is ethics? Ethica is a set of moral principles that govern the behavior of a group or individual. Therefore, computer ethics is a uh, is set of moral principles that regulate the use of computer. So, bila kita bercakap tentang penggunaan komputer, mestilah ada etika. Okay, apa sahaja yang kita buat, mesti ada etika. So, technology ethics are the moral guidelines that govern the use of computers, mobile devices, information system and related technology. So, dalam konteks yang lebih luas, kita refer ke, uh, we refer it to, uh, we refer it as technology ethics. Okay, sebab dia merangkumi bukan sahaja komputer tapi mobile device, uh, information system dan uh, semua yang berkaitan. So information accuracy is a concern. Not all information on the web is correct. Okay, so kebiasaannya uh, apa yang paling ditekankan ialah ketepatan information. Okay, bila kita bercakap tentang teknologi ethics, apa yang penting ialah ketepatan informasi yang ada dalam teknologi itu. Okay. Uh, not all information on the web is correct. Uh, then this is true. Okay, very true. Okay. So biasanya kalau macam you nak jawab soalan final, okay, uh, lebih baik you refer pada nota. Okay, sometimes ada student dia prefer uh, type je keyword dekat Google. Okay, then uh, just ambil je maklumat yang keluar. Tetapi uh, dia tak sedar maklumat yang keluar dekat web tu tidak semuanya tepat dan betul. Okay. Sebab kita tidak dapat mengenal pasti kesahihan setiap sumber yang keluar dekat web tu. 
Okay. So this digitally, yeah, this is just one example. Edited photo shows a fruit that looks like an apple on the outside and an orange on the inside. Ini dia cuma nak uh, bagi perumpamaan sahaja. Okay. Uh, ten commandments of a computer ethics. Okay. Uh, should not use a computer to harm other people. Should not interfere with other people's computer work. Should not snoop around in the people in other people's files. Should not use a computer to steal. Should not use a computer to bear false witness. Should not use a copy software for which you have not paid. Should not use other people's computer resources without authorization. Should not uh, appropriate other people's intellectual output. Should think about the social consequences of the program you write. Should use a computer in ways that show consideration and respect. Okay, ini adalah antara 10 commandments of computer ethics. Next, uh, code of conduct. Code of conduct is a written guideline that help uh, determine whether specification is ethical or unethical or allowed or not allowed. Okay, sample IT code of conduct technology may not be used to harm other people. Employees may not meddle in other files. Employees may use technology only for purpose in which they have been authorized. Technology may not be used to steal. Technology may not be used to bear false witness. So, ini adalah beberapa contoh code of conduct. Maksudnya, satu garis panduan yang ditulis untuk menentukan sama ada sesuatu itu beretika ataupun tidak beretika. Dia berbeza dengan uh, yang tadi ethics. Okay, yang tadi commandments. Okay. So, employees may not copy or use software illegally. Tapi sebenarnya dia berkait rapat dengan 10 commandments yang tadi. Employees may not use other technology resource without uh, authorization. Okay, may not use other intellectual property. Okay, dan sebagainya. Okay, next. Uh, we move to online privacy. Okay, just like privacy in the real world, internet privacy or online privacy. Okay, dia dua term yang diguna pakai. Okay, boleh diguna pakai. Internet privacy or online privacy covers the right of a person to have a private space or personal privacy in terms of storing or displaying of information pertaining to oneself on the internet. Okay, it is the control of what a person can share online. Okay, maksudnya uh, pilihan sama ada orang tu nak share ataupun tidak share itu melibatkan yang melibatkan personal uh, details about oneself. Okay, if you look at carefully, uh, number 8 in the con, uh, code of conduct, employees may not use others intellectual property as their own. Okay, apa maksudnya intellectual property, IP? Okay, in short, we call it IP. Intellectual properties refer to intangibly uh, property that is the result of creativity, such as patents, copyrights, trademarks, etc. Because it is intangible, unable to be touched or having no physical presence, IP is more difficult to be protected. Contohnya macam you reka satu produk, okay, memang idea asal you punya. Okay. Maksudnya idea tu, reka bentuk tu. Okay, dia adalah satu yang tidak boleh dipegang. Uh, dan maksudnya reka bentuk, design tu. Okay, barang tu boleh dipegang tapi dia punya reka bentuk tu. Okay. Ataupun you buat uh, satu resepi ke. Okay, benda yang tidak boleh dipegang. Idea tu. So, unlike other forms of property, such as cars or houses, IP cannot be simply recovered if it is stolen. Okay, jadi, kalau macam idea tu, you adalah orang as, orang maksudnya pertama ataupun the originality tu belongs to you. Okay, you must protect it as intellectual property. It will take more effort to protect an IP. Okay, uh, untuk mengelakkan dia daripada curi. Dia lebih sukar dibanding satu yang boleh dipegang secara fizikal macam kereta ataupun rumah. So, it is like uh, you showcase your idea online and someone steals it for other purposes. It will be hard for you to know it until someone else reports it to you or you discover it online. Contoh, you buat satu uh, karangan ke ataupun apa sahaja ataupun reka bentuk, you post dekat Facebook you, tiba-tiba ada orang ambil idea tu, claim as uh, uh, it is uh, kepunyaan dia ataupun sebagainya. Okay. So, how to protect your IP? 
So kalau tadi kita mention copy, uh, three different routes of ways to, for protecting intellectual property, dia jatuh kepada salah satu pada tiga kategori ni, copyright, patent ataupun trademark. Okay, boleh, uh, you can protect your IP intellectual property using this, one of these uh, three approaches. Okay, in terms of intellectual property, you can explore the following concept. Okay, what is copyright? Copyright is a legal right created by law of a country. It allows the creator of an original work to have the exclusive right to its use and distribution. Contohnya, kalau you tulis satu buku, okay, you berhak you sebagai pe pemilik asal uh, hasil kerja tu, okay, uh, you ada hak untuk menentukan macam mana dia disebarkan, dia digunakan okay, usually for a limited time copyright ni dia ada masa okay, uh, so that the creator can receive compensation for their intellectual effort, copyrighted works or materials which are stolen and reproduced are known as piracy or plagiarism ok, contoh kalau yang ni buku lah senang okay. ataupun sekarang ni kita dah ada ebook ok, mungkin dia boleh masuk bawah copyright And then Creative Commons, unlike copyright, Creative Commons is established to allow creators to communicate which rights they reserve and which rights they waive for the benefit of recipients or other creators. It's not as strict as copyright. Okay. Then the last one is plagiarism. If you copy someone's work or idea without acknowledging or getting the permission from the original author, it is known as plagiarism. So, contohnya kalau you buat assignment, You ambil uh, satu idea daripada uh, satu artikel, tapi you tak uh, tak letak reference. Okay, so tu, uh, itu boleh dikira sebagai plagiarism. Okay, plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. Okay, you uh, tulis ayat tu dalam assignment you, you tak letak uh, reference. Okay, then it is claimed as yours. Uh, itu adalah plagiarism. Copyright is the exclusive right to control creative works created by author. Okay. Copyright owner and performer for a specific period govern under the Copyright Act 1987 ataupun My Ipo. Kalau kita kat Malaysia, kita biasa dengan My Ipo. Copyright duration, the protection period is for the life of the author plus 50 years after his death. According to my info works that are eligible for copyright, uh, literacy works, books, articles, musical works, okay, lagu dan sebagainya, artistic work, okay, painting, photograph, okay, film, sound recordings, broadcast and derivative works. Okay, next is patent. Patent is exclusive right granted for an invention which is a product of a pro or a process that provide a new way of doing something or offers a new technical solution to a problem. Okay, contohnya kalau tudung dulu orang pakai dengan, contohlah pakai dengan uh, apa, brush, kerongsang di bawah leher tu, tiba-tiba uh, seorang ni datang dengan idea, uh, tak perlu dia dah uh, hasilkan tudung, yang tak perlu pada pin, dia dah jahit siap, uh, okay, just pakai je. Okay, uh, itu boleh dikonsider sebagai pattern. It give the patent holder the right to stop others from practicing the invention, making, using or selling without the permission of the inventor for a certain period of time. Yang ni biasanya 20 years from the uh, filling date of patent application. Uh, then, cover products or processes that possess or continue functional or technical aspect. How things work, uh, what they do, how they do it, what they are made of and how they are made adalah melibatkan pattern ok next one is trademark is a sign which distinguish the goods and services of other trader from those of another a mark includes device, brand, heading label, ticket, name, signature word, letter, numeral or any combination of this okay, ini, uh, this is the definition according to my ipo a trademark is a word, name phrase Logo, image, symbol, design, slogan, or combination of these elements secured by legal registration that identifies manufacturers or traders product or service from other products and services. Dia melibatkan apa sahaja, logo uh, ataupun dia punya uh, jenama okay, ataupun label, uh, signature dia, huruf-huruf tertentu. 
yang digunakan untuk membezakan satu company tu, satu produk daripada uh, produk yang dihasilkan oleh company lain. Okay. So, represented by the symbols TM and R. Okay. So, TM, trademarks, uh, right can last forever if the trademark continues to be used. Okay, ni adalah contoh trademarks. Okay, uh, ni macam uh, contoh Coca-Cola, bentuk dia macam tu. Uh, dia punya tulisan, okay, McDonald, okay. Uh, Volkswagen dan sebagainya lah. Okay, so this is what we have covered for chapter 6.